Good morning traders and welcome to today's live trading. Today is the 8th of June and it is a Friday. As usual we are on the FTSE 100. Firstly apologies for no trading, live trading video last week. I was actually away last week uh, with a group of friends in centre backs. Uh, we had an ace time um, but yeah there was no trading done obviously um, as I was away. Um, so back to it this week. I am looking like I'm going to have a mad hectic summer. Um, but I will still get these videos out as and when I can. Uh, hence there wasn't one yesterday, I just didn't have time. Um, so we're doing it today. So that's us the usual thing really, if I can't do it on a Thursday, I tend to try and do it on a Friday. Um, so hence why I'm doing it now. Um, and I'm actually looking at taking a long from this band that we're currently in. Um, I'm struggling to justify it just at the moment, just because we've broken down below so these lows here, um, although I do really like the potential for um, a long move, probably up to around so the seven, 700 level. Um, I would like to see it test this level first. Um, it's basically up so that whole level there. I would like to see at least a test of that before getting into a trade. Um, especially as the market's not opened yet. Um, you know, if you guys taking setups like this without a little bit of confirmation before the market opens, as I'm sure you're all aware, the opening candle on this market, uh, it can be pretty, that's a poor example, but it can be pretty big sometimes. Um, maybe it wants to flush down, catch traders on the wrong side of this market, um, then it would definitely include me in that if I was taking this a candle as a potential long, as nice as it looks. Sometimes you just got to step back and say, well, is that really that sensible? Um, has it done this? Has it done this? And in this case, it hasn't tested these levels. We're not open yet, so it's probably too risky. Um, that said, the market will probably open and rally really quickly to this level and um, make me look silly. But um, that's the plan I'm going with at the moment. If it wants to test this level, sort of move up into here, uh, react, maybe even give us a signal from this level, then I'd be happy to take that. Or a signal somewhere from within this band, having tested this level, um, I'll be okay with that. Um, other than that, we've got a band below and a band above that I've marked in. Uh, there's some other levels, but I've not bothered marking them in yet. Um, so if we don't get a setup here, as usual, we just wait for price to reach our bands and give us a setup. Um, last thing to mention, I know I sound groggy. I'm suffering quite badly with hay fever. Um, some people think it's a myth. I wish it was. Um, so yeah, apologies if I sound groggy. I'm uh, drinking lots of fluids and things, so hopefully I sound a little bit better as the day goes on. But I'll, uh, I'll wait for the open and uh, let's see if we get this trade set up. So two minutes into live trading, and for those people that don't really believe that support and resistance works, um, you watch me identify this level purely because of um, a reaction here uh, by price overnight. And basically what I was saying was I wouldn't want to trade into this level um, having not seen price test it and get caught on the wrong side of the market. And that's exactly what's happened. So you can see if Anybody that wanted to take this trade probably would have put their stops, took the stops underneath this, uh, what they hoped would be a swing low, uh, only to for price to test this level and get caught on the wrong side of the market and get stopped quite quickly, um, having watched the market open. It's just having a, sometimes just about having a little bit of patience. You're not always going to have um, a big long list of things um, that you can tick when it comes to trade setup so you know has it tested this level yes has it done this yes has it done this yes they're not always going to be all yeses um, that's your job as a trader to interpret do I have enough yeses um, are there enough confluences for this trade for me to take and that doesn't mean that that's always going to yield a positive result because it's not it's definitely not um, and unfortunately likewise even if all of them are no's the trade can still work out that is just part and parcel of trading it is purely a probabilities game 
Um, but if you can sort of see past that and see the big picture, then um, you'll do okay. And like this morning for me, this level here, with it being untested, um, and the momentum that we've had just recently, um, I, there just wasn't enough yeses, there wasn't enough confluences for me to try and trade through this level. Um, and it's paid to be a good decision. So um, as it stands, it's looking like we're wanting to break down below this level. Um, I'll continue to watch, see if we do get any setups. Um, it would be nice if we could get a short setup from up here now. Um, but I don't think we're going to. Um, a long setup from down here basically has the same problem as it did from up here. We need to see a little bit of um, confirmation that this market actually wants to move higher rather than just entering a band and giving us a, a long signal. Um, so we'll see what it does. Um, potentially we could have a trade quite quickly if it wants to move back up into this band. Uh, or if it start, carries on coming down, which is looking like it's going to, uh, we could have a little bit of a wait before we get a setup. But I'll keep watching. Right, so we're coming up to 10 past 9, and we're just getting what's looking like going to be a pin bar that I'm really interested in in acting upon uh, with a buy order. Uh, what's the high of a candle is. So I've been going to be in at 76.49.5. Submit that order. Okay, so the order's in just above this candle. Let me just double check it. I should be in 49.5. Yeah, so if it starts moving up, we're going to get triggered into a long position. Uh, a couple of reasons for this position. You can see we are failing down at this level here. And if I go across to the 4-hour chart, we are coming now directly into the 200 moving average which we haven't tested for a long, long time. Um, now this doesn't guarantee a good reaction from this level, but um, it does definitely up the probability of seeing a good reaction. Uh, we're not quite at it, I think it's at 38. It's around about 38 it's at. We've come as low as 40 here, but if we do get a reaction, the 200 moving average will move up slightly. It may look like it's touched it, um, at the at the point it's got to here if price starts to move up so we're getting the signals we're getting sort of um, we're in round about the right pr uh, price point um, so I'm, ha I'm happy with that we do actually have a untested um, low here from yesterday um, which I would be interested in potentially trying to run this trade too um, the risk on this trade, you're going to be going up for maybe 10, 11, maximum 12 points. Um, so, you know, the risk to reward, even up to the next band, is good. Uh, never mind if you try to run it for 50 points, which I, you know, I probably won't. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if this level gets hit today. Um, and this looks a very sensible point. To, um, to try and get in. So the order's in. Um, I'll double check and make sure it's correct. Uh, but the order's in. I'll bring the ticket across and uh, let's see if this one gets triggered. <laughs> gone 10 o'clock, uh, it's 3 minutes past 10 and you can see we did have a move up um, which triggered us in, we retested this level that I'd drawn in here and we did have a bit of a bounce up but um, as it's probably quite obvious to see now there's sort of a sloping uh, line down here we've sort of tested, 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 we came up into that again and we've sold off a little bit back into this level that we, were where we sort of previously identified the trade from um, as I've said, that um, 200 is a little bit lower. It's actually up at 39.40 now. Uh, so about the low of this. Um, I would be willing to sort of give give it a little wiggle room to get down to that 200, maybe poke through it a little bit uh, and react. Obviously, we've got the band, this band here. Uh, if it came down to 33, you know, we'd be significantly 
poking through it. I don't know I'd give it that much room. Um, but probably a little bit past two points, you know, a few points past this swing low here. Um, but really, we wanted it to sort of push through this level and start closing through it. It's good that we're seeing a reaction back down at this level. That's good. Obviously, we want to see it push through now. We've got sort of like a wedge pattern here. Uh, we don't want to see it breaking down below here because that's probably going to mean a continuation uh, further down. So it would be nice to see price now sort of consolidating and moving upwards rather than continuing its downward move. Um, looking at the higher time frames, the ATMA on both higher time frames, um, I mean the hourly is is up in this band. That's how quickly we've been moving down. Um, so there's still like a good, uh, even from where price is now, still a good 15-ish points to the uh, hourly ATMA. And that, that EMA follows price quite closely, so it shows you how quickly price has been moving down recently. Um, and I would expect maybe some sort of reaction at that. So obviously the, the target for the trade is going to be up towards the next band. Um, and I would like to see it do it within this hour, if possible, uh, just to give us that maximum risk to reward. If it starts meandering sideways, then that ATMA is going to come down with the price. Um, and we might get a reaction round about the 55 level by the time... Uh, we, we move up to that, which obviously wouldn't be ideal. So if you can move up now, that gives us the maximum room uh, before we see a potential reaction. But there's nothing really much else to do. Um, we've not really gone very far um, since since getting into the trade. Like I say, we're just sort of waiting to see if price can break this slope in support line. We're back into it now. Um, but, I mean, we very qu quickly could be back down below the um, the other horizontal line here as well. So it's just, a, it's just a case of waiting to see what Price wants to do. At the minute, it's sort of um, hanging out in between. So I'll keep watching, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're 11 o'clock now. Um, this market has pretty much gone to sleep since we got into this trade, but... We are back down at the lows at the moment, um, and as I mentioned before, I'll bring it up. Uh, we're right on this 200 now, um, so maybe we are going to get a bit of a spike through here, but I'm not going to allow it too much. Um, you know, it's all well and good doing good analysis, like it's good that we've noticed that it's at the 200, but you can't get attached to the fact that you think just because it's a 200 moving average on a decently high time frame, the four hours, four hour chart, and it's been untested for a good while, that doesn't 100% mean that you are going to get a bounce from this level. Um, so you can sort of like stake all your belief on that. You know, you've got to, if, if price is not going to bounce from there, then you've got to be ready to, you know, cut the trade if you're in one. Or just accept that you're not going to get a trade from a bounce that's not going to happen. Um, don't get married to the idea. Um, so, yes, I am a little bit lenient uh, towards... So we're currently... I think we're about 10 points down. The target on the trade is up to sort of 16-ish points, because I think it would get into this band. Um, so, really, we can't allow it too much further, like I say... When we, get, when we start getting down towards the lower end of this band, then we are going to be looking at one-to-one -one risk to reward, which is the minimum, really, that you can go for. Um, and still maintain a good, um, a good edge in the market. So that's sort of my limit for this trade, really. I'm going to be watching it closely, and if we do start moving down quite quickly, then um, I'll probably come out. What could happen is we have a flush down to say sort of towards the S3 and bounce quite quickly from there. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that happen. Um, you know, end up having a decent spike through the 200 and then at the end of uh, the current four hour candle, you see a long wick through the through the 200 but it actually closes back above it. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that. Um, but what I'm hoping for because I'm in this trade, is that it doesn't spike too much further through it, and um, 
Instead, we bounce almost directly from the level itself. But um, who knows? It's it's looking now like we're probably going to be coming out of this trade uh, rather soon. Um, but I will keep watching because you never know. Right, so we're moving up fairly well now. Um, it literally came down double bottoms with this thing. We've seen a really good rally, which is good to see. Um, but if you remember a short while ago, I was talking about the hourly ATMA and how it was in the band above. Um, it, was in, it was within this band. And the longer that price took to move up, the lower that ATMA would come. And as you can see, it's currently sat just below uh, today's S2 now. A couple of hours ago, it was well within this band. I think even in the previous hour, it was just at the lower um, boundary of the band. Um, but now it has come down to that um, S2 level. And we haven't really had a proper test of this ATMA for a good couple of hours, um, which makes this a little bit troublesome because um, it makes it a really... Um, sensible areas to come out of the trade because of the potential for a bounce from that area um, that said that makes our risk to reward not fantastic um, because currently we've, we've risked probably about 10 points and I was you know, more than ready to risk around 12 points um, so if we get to the S2 we're probably looking at a 1 to 1 on 12 points if we can get up to the band then we're looking at a bit better probably up to like 1.2 1.3 to 1 um, so it's it's what do you do really um, you've got to play it sensible at this point because uh, to lose out on the potential profit just because um, of a number that you've got in your head when you're looking at something concrete in front of you uh, that price is potentially struggling with and we're going to watch it here now see how it does um, but I think if I get a spike up through this 200 see this is the most inopportune time for um, for your trading platform to disconnect um, so I'll just do this on my phone um, but we're getting a spike up into the S2 level now so, I mean, it's moving really quite well. Maybe we, we can hold on for, um, you know, this extra move up into the band and see how we get on. Um, I'll just bring the trade across. So, typically this loads back up. You can see we're 11 points, nearly 12 points up here. Um, so, it is moving well. But I think... It's right up into that. I think the, the sensible thing to do is probably to close it here. 11.5 points is a good return on the 10 points that we've risked. It is probably works out at about 1 to 1, which is the sensible thing to do. Like I say, this is an S2 level, so it's it's a um, you know level of support and resistance within itself, married with that ATMA that's come down, married with the, you know, this is the momentum on this market at the moment. Um, probably makes it a, a sound decision to come out now what I would like to see going in for the, to the rest of the day I don't know if I'm going to trade for the rest of today half past 11 now we'll see um, is so potentially we get say maybe a retracement now maybe down into these levels uh, you can see here where we've bounced maybe it comes back up here then what I'd like to see is a break up back into this band um and what I would ultimately expect it to do is get up to sort of the seven seven hundred level, um, possibly today, if not today, probably Monday or over the weekend at least. Um, you know, open up around these levels. Um, given that we've come into that four hour two hundred, um, I don't expect that this short move here will be the only bounce we see from this two hundred. It could well be, but um, I think the market will want to come up and test the 7700 level before maybe selling off a little bit further um, but like I say you can't get married to an idea um, who knows what it'll do 
But yeah, so 11 and a half, 12 points for today. Um, again, apologies for not putting one out last week, but I was just away. There's nothing I could do. Um, I didn't. Re- I thought I might get time at the start of the week to record a trade, but I just didn't. Um, so unfortunately, there was no video to post. Um, but we've got a good, decent winning trade today. Um, and as usual, I hope you've found some useful you some use from it. Um, but thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do consider leaving a like on the video. And if you haven't done already, please consider subscribing. We've just hit 1,000 subscribers, which is really, really cool, to be honest. Um, I didn't foresee us getting to 1,000. Um, YouTube's pretty difficult, um, so I'm really pleased with that, and I thank you everybody that subscribed so far. But yeah, thank you very much. I hope you've had a good week, and I hope you have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week. So just a quick little interlude. Um, we are just a little bit past half past 12, and I don't know if you remember what I said um, just before I wrap the video up about what I probably thought Price would do next. So potentially we get, say, maybe a retracement now, maybe down into these levels. Uh, you can see here where we've bounced. Maybe it comes back up here. Then what I'd like to see is a break up back into this band. Um, and what I would ultimately expect it to do is get up to sort of the 7 700 level. But it's pretty much done it. Um, we got the reaction where we got out of the trade. I said what would likely happen is we come and test this level here. We were like a hair's width from touching that. Um, and then I said oh, it will probably move up into this band and ultimately up to the 7 700 level, which is currently five points from. Um, now it's all well and good having good analysis or being able to perform good analysis but there was just no trading um, opportunities there why that word eluded me I have no idea um, there was no there was no way of getting into this trade um, as it stood apart from obviously running the position that I was already in now yes you could have done that I think I said something ridiculous at 50 points wasn't it uh, yeah so it, that would have been a big old trade but I would never, well, yeah, probably never try and trade through a, a, a band like this when, I, when I've drawn them in because that's the reason they're there. They're there because they are almost stopping points for price. I would expect some sort of reaction. Of course, sometimes you're going to get price movement where you don't get any reaction there. There's just no sellers um, or there's no buyers if you're moving down through it. It happens, but... What you can let happen is um, you have a day like this where you've identified something that you might think might happen, um, like this 50 point move that I've said. It happens, you get pissed off because you've not acted upon it, you have you tell yourself in your head, I've missed out on 50 points, uh, and the next time this sort of scenario arises, you're like, I remember last time, I'm definitely staying in this trade. You get into a trade. It moves into a level you think would be sensible to exit the trade, but you're like, no. I remember last time this this did actually get to where I thought it would ultimately want to go. I'm going to hold for more points. It comes back, it stops you out, and then you really are pissed off because it's not the traditional way of going against your strategy. You're trying to run it for more points uh, rather than you know. I think the sort of um, the worst mistake people make is moving their stop rather than targeting too much. But uh, it's a mistake all the same. You had a winning trade, profit was there on the table when it got to the sensible level, the level that your strategy tells you to get out at, and for whatever reason you don't take it, then your edge disappe- your edge doesn't disappear, but your, your edge isn't quantified in those circumstances. Um, I don't know the statistics of me trying to run trades through bands, because I don't want to know it um, from testing. Um, it's not. It's not uh, feasible. It's not a feasible thing to do. Um, I know it'll happen sometimes, um, and that's just that's what I'm happy knowing. Um, I know that this. Um, it's good to see that the analysis has worked out, but it doesn't happen every time or even most times. So I'm not going to get upset about it. What I'm happy about is that I identified a decent trade setup. I managed it really well and I got out at a good position. So, yeah, that's what you need to be happy with. Focus on the right things. Don't worry about the Hollywood trades. Um, 
stick to the boring stuff and that will that will see you well but i am really ending it this time see you next week <laughs>